Okay. <laughs> I'd like to call the village board meeting for the village of Cary for Tuesday, September 15, 2015, to order with roll call, please. Chapman? Present. Judek? Here. Cavelli? Here. Kraus? Here. Kosler? Here. McAlpine? Here. Thank you. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? And after we're done with the pledge, if we can remain standing for a moment, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you. I'd like to um, have a moment of silence for another fallen uh, first responder from um, McHenry County. Uh, Deputy Dwight Manis passed away this week uh, from injuries he sustained in the line of duty last year. And I think it's it's poignant uh, today with the, the the addition of an, another new warrior for the village of Cary, or Cary that I think that we enter into uh, a moment of silence for him, please. Thank you very much. And now we'll move to the open forum where the public is invited to make an issue oriented comment on any matter of public concern not otherwise on the agenda. I had one individual sign in, Jennifer Weinhammer. <clears throat> Um, thanks again, Mark, for meeting with me last night. Again, as I said earlier, I learned a lot from you last night. Um, but I had a question about the um, minutes from the village board meeting last month, um, where it said that I stated the PEDCOR, the, you know, the question that I'd asked about PEDCOR, and um, that you had stated that the development will be low income housing, not Section 8. Um, but you also said that they can't legally turn around Section 8, uh, they can't deny Section 8 vouchers. So I just wanted to know if that could be amended. Um, as I explained to you last night, Section 8 housing is, is offered through HUD, Housing and Urban Development. They typically are an entire complex. This is not, this project doesn't have anything to do with HUD. It's through IDA, the Illinois Housing Authority. And they can, like every landlord, has to, by state statute, accept HUD vouchers when they're presented. That's the, that's the only difference. This is not a HUD project. It is not a Section 8 housing project. So I understand that it's not a HUD project as a generalization, but they're still required by law to accept the Section 8 vouchers. Where in here it says you, that you said that they're not. As I explained last week, they can accept, and I explained last night, they can accept HUD vouchers. Right, so HUD being Section 8. So on here, will you guys be amending that they won't be, that it won't be Section 8? Uh, that, that those minutes have already been approved, so they'll probably be approved as as, as done. But I, I've made it pretty clear to you in the, the meetings that we've had, the emails that we've had, that uh, the, the project that's presented before us is not a HUD project. I understand it's not a HUD project, but that there could be the Section 8 vouchers that have to be accepted. Correct. As, how else can I explain that to you? Is there anybody else on the board that like understood what we talked about last week then, or? I, I, go ahead. You go yeah, ahead. I, I totally understand what you're saying. And I, you just want to get the record clear as far as what you said and what the answer was. Right. Um, yeah, and, and the mayor is correct I, uh, now that um, Section 8 is a voucher program. So there's no real definition of Section 8 housing. That's sort of a term that's loosely used. Everybody has to accept Section 8 vouchers, like he said. Um, but I think the mayor's made it. He's, he's saying that we can't change the minutes now. They've already been approved. They were approved at the Committee of the Whole meeting? Or when were they approved? Well, I, I would interject that we do have a video um, for the meeting that's permanent that doesn't change. Right. Minutes are a synopsis of the conversation, and the, the video stands. Okay. And the, the minutes haven't been approved, though. I mean, we haven't I voted asking. on the minutes yet. Section 8, maybe what you want 
in the minutes would be something then along the lines. I, I'm not, Section 8 can be used anywhere. So the PEDCOR project is not a Section 8 project being built. However, if a resident happens to move into there, they could qualify for a voucher from Section 8. So then they could be living there with Section 8. Right. I'm just saying that the way it's stated here, not Section 8. You know, I understand that the project as a whole is through. But, but I think any project that comes before the village would be not Section 8, or every project that comes before the village would be Section 8. Everything is eligible for Section 8, I believe. Correct. Right. It's misleading, I think, is what it amounts to. Is if you put in there that it, to put that it is Section 8 makes it sound like it's a Section 8 housing project. And that's not factual. So it's just a matter of saying, you know what, you, you would ask the question. And I think that what the mayor is trying to say is that, sure, someone could come in and do that, but we're not going to say that this project is Section 8 housing because that would not be, that would be misleading. What do you want it to say? Um, but it will be low income housing, you know, but Section 8 vouchers are still accepted. As, as anywhere are, you know. I mean, I, when I'm talking to people and they're asking, you know, these questions and stuff like that, and I asked last time for clarification on it because I didn't know myself, I'm still learning about things. <clears throat> then when you say not Section 8, the way that I read it is that there's not going to be any Section 8 people in it. And I agree. I, when I saw these minutes, I read it the same way that she read it. Um, so I, I, I do agree with you on that because I read it the exact same way. If I had no knowledge of that and I'm just solely looking at minutes, I would just assume that there's that Section 8 is not even accepted in this development. That's just me. Uh, then I guess we'll, can we go ahead and modify the minutes? At the well, when the motion is made for these minutes, someone can amend them okay. to correct the All right. ladies' comments. And I know, like when we talked last night too, I had mentioned that to you, you know, as one of my concerns a couple times. And you agreed with me that when you were going to talk with people, that you know, you would say, yeah, this is a low income project, but that they, they still have to legally, how, yes. They have to, just like every home that's in our community, that I've talked to residents right. that have HUD vouchers that live in regular homes, that they are susceptible to that. Right. So you guys will bring that up then during when the, the motion, I, shortly. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Consent agenda. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving forward, I have a few things on my report. Uh, first and foremost, we have an introduction of our new police officer, uh, Andrew Runyon. Um, would you like to come up front, please? My pleasure to introduce uh, Andrew Runyon as one of our, our newest police officers. Uh, he uh, currently resides in the village of Oswego. Uh, he previously was employed by the Park Service, was a Park Service officer for the Fox Valley Park District Police Department. Um, he um, uh, was a basketball and baseball official for the Illinois High School, uh, High School Association. Which means that you can take a lot of criticism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he attended Lewis University in Romeoville, uh, my alma mater, uh, where he achieved a uh, bachelor of arts degree in the field of criminal justice. And um, while he was attending Lewis University, he was an official and a supervisor for intramural sports and uh, the Department of Student Recreation. He'll be attending uh, basic law enforcement training at the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy. I. Uh, was inaccurate when I wrote that initially because we uh, initially had uh, reservations at the Police Training Institute and they overbooked the Police Training Institute so they would change the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy. And after his uh, training, he'll be going to our uh, field training program in uh, the Village of Cherry. So uh, the other thing is you were number 55 and you were a center on the basketball team. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Man. You can find anything on the internet. Yes, we know. So, without further ado, I'd uh, like maybe to uh, introduce your family that are here. Yeah. Um, if, I would like to have them all come okay. up and stand with them while we go to swear. Do you want to introduce who else yeah. is here? Uh, my grandpa. That's my grandpa. My grandpa. My grandma. My mom, my sister, and my brother. 
to welcome the bone security. It's, a, it's, a, it's always an exciting day when we swear in the water sticker and pleased to see our, our, our men in blue, and I don't know if there's any female well, Yeah, I'd like to introduce one of our commissioners. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and we got Doris Shanakis, who is on our police commission board, who oversees the, the hiring and the, the promotion process within the, our, the police department. So I'm glad to see that we've got a great turnout. Uh, you're, you're coming into a great organization. So without further ado, let's get started, okay? okay. I, Andrew Runyon. I, Andrew Runyon. Having been appointed to the Office of Patrol Officer. Having been appointed to the Office of Patrol Officer. In the village of Cary. In the village of Cary. In the county of McHenry aforesaid. In the county of McHenry aforesaid. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of Office of Patrol Office. Officer. The duties of uh, <laughs> the duties of the office of patrol officer. The duties of the office of patrol officer. According to the, the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank Welcome you. to the new business. It's traditional to have someone pin your badge on yes. so you can select who you'd like to. Oh, I have one here. Oh. <laughs> seeing you around here. We're going to take a, like a five minute recess while they go up to their party, save some cake. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations to you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Are we taking a five minute recess? Yes. Oh, we can have cake. Oh, look at him. That's just like going, Kate. Can I bring a piece down there? Oh, oh. she's done the one year anniversary, too, and then they go. Oh. Mm -hmm. They're going to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, well, she should have done, yeah, done the one year, too. Hmm? She should have done the one year, too. He's not here. Oh, okay. He's got it covered. Nice to know. Well, I guess I'm going upstairs. Hey, Eric. How are you? Good. How's your wife? How's your wife? How's your wife? <laughs> oh, really? Oh, wow. Are they okay? What's wrong with them? Oh, why are you getting sick now too? There it is. I know. Yeah, stay away. Stay away. Yeah. Can't afford we need to be careful how we change it. My house is in the one year. He's not here. That's okay. All right. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Is the microphone off? Yeah. 
<laughs> said something. <laughs> and the tape too. Not to worry, Mark. Got you covered. Uh oh. Thanks, Chief. We're good. We're good. Wait a minute. Oh, they're coming. So that's a seven thirty. So good afternoon. Make sure you can't. So. We're going to go ahead and reconvene. Uh, moving along with my mayor's report, I have three proclamations tonight, and I have asked a couple of trustees to help me with them. Uh, first, we're going to have a, a proclamation for the Constitution Week of 2015. Trustee Krauss is going to help me with this. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, whereas September 17th, 2015 marks the 228th anniversary of the drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention and whereas it is fitting and proper to officially recognize this magnificent document and the anniversary of its creation and whereas it is fitting and proper to officially recognize the patriotic celebrations which will commemorate the occasion and whereas public law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September 17th through, 20, through the 23rd as Constitution Week. Now therefore, Mark Kaunick, the mayor of the village of Cary, does hereby proclaim September 17th through the 23rd, 2015, to be Constitution Week in the village of Cary, and ask our residents to reaffirm the ideals of the framers of the Constitution had in 1787, dated this 15th day of September 2015. Thank you. And now we have a, a proclamation for uh, Fire Prevention Week. Hear the beep where you sleep. Every bedroom needs a working smoke alarm. October 4th through the 10th, 2015. Whereas the village of Cary is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting our community. And whereas the fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally. And the homes are the locations where people are the greatest risk from fire. And whereas homes, home fires kill 2,000 755 people in the United States in 2013, according to the National Fire Protection Association, and fire departments in the United States responded to 369,500 home fires. And whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying and report homes fires in half, and whereas three out of five home fire deaths result from fires in properties without working smoke alarms, and whereas in one-fifth of all homes with smoke alarms, none were working, and whereas when smoke alarms should have operated but did not do so, it was usually because batteries were missing, disconnected, or dead. And whereas half of the home fire deaths result from fires reported at night between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. when most people are asleep. And whereas Cary residents should install smoke alarms in every sleeping room outside each separate sleeping area and at every level of the home. Whereas Cary residents should inst install smoke alarms and alert devices that meet the needs of people who are deaf or hard of hearing. And whereas Cary residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will, therefore, be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas Cary's first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas Cary residents are responsive to public education measures and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. And whereas the 2015 Fire Protection Week theme, hear the beep where you sleep, every, every bedroom needs a working smoke alarm, effectively serves to remind us that we need working smoke alarms to give us the time to get out safely. Therefore, I, Mark Kaunick, Mayor of the Village of Cary, do hereby proclaim October 4th through the 10th, 2015, as Fire Protection Week throughout the Village of Cary. And I urge all people of the Village of Cary to install smoke alarms in every bedroom, outside each sleeping area, and at every level of, of the home, including the basement, and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of the Village of Cary's fire and emergency services during Fire Protection Week 2015, dated this 15th day of September 2015. Thank you. And one more, uh, Trustee Chapman is going to help me out with that. It's Alliance Candy Day. 
Whereas the Cary Lions Club is an active part of our community and whereas the Cary Lions Club has dedicated its service to the community, particularly in the areas of vision and hearing conservation and in the area areas of aid to the deaf and blind and whereas the Cary Lions Club will participate in candy days on Friday, October 9th and Saturday, October 10th giving away candy and accepting donations for humanitarian services. Now, therefore, Mark Connick, Mayor of the Village of Cary, does hereby proclaim October 9th and 10th, 2015 to be Lions Candy Days in Cary, Illinois, and urge all to donate generously. Dated this 15th day of September, 2015. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Thank you for speaking some last minute adjustments here. All right, thank you very much. Uh, moving to our consent agenda, I'm going to divide it uh, in, in two. Uh, one, um, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items number one and two with the uh, amending item number two, the minutes of the September 1st, 2015 Village Board meeting to articulate on page, uh, page two of six under Miss Jennifer Weinhammer's contract to say state of the pet court development will not be low income housing, not section eight, but will accept section eight vouchers. That. So I'll entertain a motion as amended. So moved. Second. Roll call please. Chapman. Yes. Kosler. Abstain. Cavelli. Yes. Dudek? Yes. Kraus? Yes. McAlpine? Yes. Thank you. I will entertain a motion to approve consent agenda items number three and four. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call, please. McAlpine? Yes. Kraus? Yes. Dudek? Yes. Cavelli? Yes. Hosler? <clears throat> yes. And Chapman. Yes. Thank you. Uh, moving to items for separate action. I will entertain a motion to approve resolution R15-09-02, a collective bargaining agreement between the Village of Cary and the Service Employees International Union Local 73 for the term of May 1st, 2015 through April 30th, 2020. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to give a brief report for the benefit of the public. Um, the village has been in negotiations with our service employees, International Union Local, since roughly spring. Um, their agreement with the village was a three-year agreement that was negotiated from May 1, 2012 through April 30, 2015. It expired. We've been in uh, honest, uh, good, fair discussions with the union um, since the spring, as I mentioned. Um, we have 18 employees represented in this union um, that uh, predominantly provide public work services to our residents. Uh, wastewater, water, street operations, snow plowing, trees, all the important day-to-day -day things that sometimes we take for granted. Um, I want to recognize two individuals before I review the agreement. Um, Al Ribbon, who's our union steward, one of our union steward representatives, one of our employees, senior employees in our in our village. Al's here tonight. He worked with us through this process, as well as Nick Perone, who's the union representative from Local 73. Um, we spent uh, five to six bargaining sessions uh, finding ways to make our operation more professional and efficient. We had uh, previously had 12 uh, job classifications in our union for 18 people. And one of our goals through the process was to work with labor to find ways to uh, become more efficient and also reward employees by growth uh, as we've had attrition through the village ranks. By way of background, since 2012, uh, we've had about seven or eight positions of the 19 that we had at the time turn over uh, during that period. That's substantial uh, in the evolution of the department. Number of senior employees moved on, some attrition a below rank and uh, we've worked hard with labor including on some side letter agreements over the last couple of years to uh, keep improving the way we do business by working with our existing people. Uh, this has resulted in the ability to not need to hire certain positions. Uh, it also has resulted in uh, new employees coming to our work group uh, that are 
up and coming, uh, want to advance in a cross training way. Uh, truly, all of our employees do, and they've embraced the concept through this agreement. Uh, we recognize that in the terms of the agreement, in a new uh, program that we have that we think will be, for us, fantastic and probably uh, best practice that others will follow. We have a added a um, certification pay schedule, which assists us in um, predominantly in the water and wastewater side, encouraging folks to get the licensing, the training, the classroom work that we need to be able to, uh, from a state regulatory standpoint, oversee our water and wastewater operations. And we've gotten a, a broader bench of folks that are now interested, I think, and over the next couple of years, we'll see the benefits of that. We've had, those positions are fairly competitive. We've lost through um, hires from other communities in the western suburbs and including Crystal Lake, picking some of our prime utility workers. And we've been able to find good people on the bench that just need some encouragement uh, and opportunities to grow. And so this, this contract recognizes that. But obviously the key aspects for us from a cost standpoint and the employees from a wage uh, benefit standpoint are wages and benefits. We had a um, good discussion about a five-year agreement here to provide very certainty to both employees and to the village through this term. And we know that there's substantial change going on in our state, in Illinois, from the standpoint of state shared revenues with the local municipalities. But uh, we took the advantage through this to um, find a way to work within our house to economize. But the fact is the wages for year one increased by a flat 1.8%. Uh, there is a new st uh, step system that's been created for these five positions. Of the five positions, three of those positions have only one person in them, and the mechanic, the chief utility operator, and the engineering technician, which will be a new position to the bargaining unit. Uh, and then we have two job titles that have been created, entitled now Maintenance and Utility Worker 1, Maintenance and Utility Worker 2. So that recognizes and title the new responsibilities we're asking folks to acquire. 1.8% uh, flat year one wages. They have increased uh, by 1% per year their contribution to the PPO plan, uh, which has been a village goal. Uh, in the four out years of the agreement, um, there are to the step scale 2% um, adjustments in year two and three, and then 1.5% one adjustments in year four and five. Um, I indicated the PPO uh, changes, which uh, this group assisted us in implementing the first HMO plan for the village of Cary. We now have penetration for 60 full-time employees. We have a third of our employees now using an HMO product that's 19% less cost for the taxpayers as well as for the employees. And so we recognize that with a lower contribution rate that's been fixed for the HMO plan at 13%. Um, we also um, indicated the funding that was tied to the certification plan, the restructured job titles. We made some tweaks to some of the on-call uh, duty schedule issues as we basically merged siloed departments within a department. We needed to adjust some of the callback requirements, uh, and so that's what we did. And we recognized uh, an additional holiday that we were short by external comparables by assigning Veterans Day as a day off for employees, which was, was a logical uh, date to ask. It's before plowing season, and uh, that's part of the agreement. So myself and Director Morimoto represented the village of Cary through this process with uh, Nick Al and his team. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions. Um, from the standpoint of the village staff. Do we have any questions? I guess on number four, the highlights of the agreement include number four. So when we talk about wages increase 2% plus any eligible salary steps, and then the total increase in year two would be 4.3%, and then year three, 4.5%. So if we just look at the increases, that's that comes up to 8.8%. But if we increase the, um, the steps in there, that brings it up to like 17.6%. So are we saying then over five years, our, the budget of we need to increase like revenue by about 20%, 17.8%, so to speak? No, the best way to explain it is a year by year basis because there's differences between year one and then years two through five. My answer is with year one, uh, it's a flat 1.8% increase all in. That's roughly in this current year budget and as direct a direct, uh, finance consultant the Ducharme briefed you at committee that we zeroed wages for this year and we'll come back if needed with budget amendment. 
So to give you just a quantification of year one, it's about a $16,000 spend uh, for the wage adjustment in this current fiscal year that we'll address through our budgeting process. The four out years that you asked about, each year is slightly different. Um, in year two, there is a 2% adjustment to uh, the step system, and then the delta between the 2% and the year two 4.3% is the, salary, the, the step system that's in place that uh, recognizes by years of service uh, employees as they uh, are here longer in that plan. And the reason that there is um, a 4.3 and a 4.5 is because what I mentioned earlier, in the last three years, we've had roughly eight new employees come to us that are moving through the step system. So we have some employees that were at lower bands that aren't topped out that are moving through, and that is why those percentages are slightly higher for wages. Okay. Are there any other questions? Roll call, please. Valley? Yes. McAlpine? Yes. Dudek? Yes. Consler? Yes. Chapman? Yes. Cross? Yes. Thank you. Uh, moving uh, forward, we have, I will entertain a motion to approve resolution R15-09-03, awarding the bid for the replacement of the primary village hall rooftop HVAC unit to the lowest responsible and responsive bidder, Jensen's Plumbing and Heating, in Woodstock, <coughs> Illinois, in the bid amount of $26,750, with a contingency for minor unforeseen changes to the scope for a total budget of up to $31,000. So moved. Second. Eric. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this item was uh, noted in the packet included in our current fiscal year budget. The current unit is one of three units that is responsible for maintaining heating and ventilation for uh, this building, the police department, uh, as well as the village boardroom. Uh, the unit does uh, actually recently experience some mechanical issues, and uh, the timing actually is could be better, but will be. Uh, uh, with this improvement within the next month or so, get this unit replaced and ready for the next uh, next summer heating and cooling needs. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. This is something that's very near and dear to Rick's heart. <laughs> Nancy already looked, she already gave me the eye. <laughs> Rick is always against putting a dime into this building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the dime would be like fine. It's the hundreds of thousands of dollars, <laughs> over, and it's not worth it. Okay, roll call, please. Kosler? Yes. Kraus? Yes. Dudak? Yes. Maria? <laughs> McAlpine? Yes. Cavelli? Yes. Chapman? Yes. Well, look at there. Look at that. Good job. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. I'm right, moving uh, to the administrator's report. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple uh, updates for the trustees, and we've had some good discussion at committee tonight. I'd just like to keep the public aware of the uh, Metro project that we have ongoing. We do have a meeting scheduled for uh, Monday, October the uh, 5th uh, with the State of Illinois Department of Transportation uh, to talk with them about the uh, easements and other um, help that we need on that project, which we're very optimistic about. But I just wanted to indicate that I'm going to start now over the course of the next two to three weeks prior to that meeting, uh, trying to engage some dialogue with Metro directly and about what we're doing, where we're at, and why, try to ascertain um, the process with the Union Pacific that we're aware that they've already had discussion and engagement in uh, regarding our station project. Um, so I just wanted to give you that briefing. Um, the other reason is because um, it's not too early to have us start thinking about budget. Um, we're, as you know, completed our capital improvement program substantially for this year, and we're trying from a budgetary standpoint to start sizing up what next year is going to look like. And we've, you know, and it's up to you through budget discussions and debate, dis debate, um, look at what the capital program is going to be next year. And we've at least temporarily said that we'd like the downtown to be the focus and not necessarily a road program. Um, so that, that still is ongoing. It's all somewhat connected to this in some way. Just wanted to uh, brief you on that. And always happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, strategic plan, project uh, plan follow-up. 
Uh, I'm going to continue to be bringing this back now every meeting. We, we, we've gotten a lot of the backlog issues out of our way for the most part from the committee standpoint. We have a couple others popping up. We obviously have some major projects coming down the pike. I received notice uh, two days ago that Meyer Material is going to be submitting within 30 days uh, the conditional uh, use permit uh, extension that, that we uh, have had discussion about. So we're now starting to line up dates for those sessions. And you'll be involved and aware of what that is as that plan pans out. But that ties to our work planning schedule for your committee and board and zoning board. Uh, but I'm going to be bringing back to you the plan and some of the specific projects now. Our team, uh, through our um, review process that's now mid-year already, and uh, through where we're at, we're going to start um, from a department head basis having these projects come back to you in that setting. And so that's going to take up some of your time at committee uh, and board, you know, through my report as needed. So I just want to let you know that. Um, glad to take Chris. any feedback. Uh, Trustee Costler has already commented, and Trustee Cavelli on some of the projects that you'd like to see out of the shoot. And we've talked about how important I believe the zoning ordinance process project is for redo. We had, we had another meeting today talking about the RFP, RFQ process that we're now writing for that. Um, so those are going to be coming back at you soon. The ones that I'm mainly concerned about right now, um, and we don't need to debate it tonight if, if time is of the essence, is, is predominantly this police station uh, improvement project. I mean, it's the elephant in the room. Uh, from the standpoint of a multi-year basis. And I mean, we have some ideas that we, we can bring forward. We're cognizant of the state financial position and what that means to other longer term decisions. So we've been thoughtful about when to bring this forward to put in proper context. But I'll tell you, between now and March budget, we're going to really need to have uh, some good discussions as a board about that because it's a substantial effort in terms of site planning, site options. Some site options have come forward in the last 90 days that I never would have thought would be options for us. Um, and, you know, I think it's important while we have issues like Meyer and other development, you know, taking up our time, but we can't keep our eye off that ball on that project. So that's what I mean by uh, planning projects coming to you. So thank you for that um, ability to update you. Next, I have the Cary Main Street Fest. Um, I wanted to just uh, again indicate that we're excited to have a number of our trustees able to be around for the weekend. Uh, glad that people are volunteering. We've got a great uh, Chamber of Commerce that's doing, I think, a fantastic job getting that festival uh, continued to run in a great way. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. I, I Last I saw 79, 80 degrees. Um, love to have the citizens come out and join us on Main Street uh, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Um, glad to have, uh, and I'll help in any way if, if, if you all want to uh, we have a booth that's available that can be staffed as people have time. We've kind of set it up on an ad hoc basis uh, so that if elected officials would like to engage with citizens, that's available for you. But we've tried to keep it so that it's flexible. So as time is available, you can use it the best way you can. So uh, just glad to um, you know have that coming up this weekend again. And then lastly, I wanted to add to the agenda um, Request came in last week for Liberty Signage to come up. We've received some correspondence uh, as a board regarding um, the, the items regarding this, the signs um, that we had discussed about last summer. And I want to turn over to Mayor, Mayor Kaunick to uh, kind of provide an update and then engage any conversation that's necessary. Thank you, Chris. Uh, as you know, you all have been in receipt of the letter from Liberty Advertising. Uh, this, this board granted Liberty Advertising a one-year extension to their agreement uh, part of the, uh, the agreement uh, for the extension was the, the removal of one sign, or two faces of sign, I guess you'd call it, at, on Jandis Cutoff and Jandis Road, which have been successfully removed. And then we'd asked for some sort of a beautification process for the, the remaining signs that are on uh, Lake Julian's property, as well as up on Metro, uh, as you coming in and out of town above that uh, the concrete wall there. So they have, they've abided by uh, what we've asked. They have... Um, come up with a, a couple of solutions to make the signage look a little bit nicer, kind of to conform a little bit to our sign uh, program that we have right now in our sign ordinance to make them look more of like a monument sign. In addition to that, uh, I can't remember if we, the petitioners are here. If they, feel free if you'd like to come up and interject. But uh, um, part of the thing was is they were thinking about electronic signage. Um, part of the electronic signage uh, that they have, were thinking that in the event that the village were to approve an electronic sign uh, that would 
uh, that sign would be erected on Lake Julian's property. And then at that time, they would remove the signage from the metro. So we would just have really two faces of, of um, billboard signage, so to speak. So uh, I had a meeting with uh, Liberty Advertising with, uh, with Brian Simmons, and we kind of talked about these things. And I uh, had said, go ahead and send a letter to the rest of the board. You all should have been in receipt. Did you get the, uh, one of the things that they were looking at was um, some of the new signage that municipalities are using on the entryway are they're as beautiful as they look. They are actually foam, and it's a, a really it's kind of a, a unique process. And that was kind of the thing that we were looking for that we would kind of enhance this. So um, I like I had suggested to Liberty Advertising that uh, was a, the mechanical signs or the digital the signs were weren't something I was anticipating at the time. I, took that curveball, and I said, well, let's, we'll talk about it at, at the village board. So I would kind of like to get uh, an idea from, just a, a, a quick idea of what people are thinking about for this, because I'd like to move this to um, a, a committee meeting uh, coming up in the, in the next uh, few meetings so that we can have a, a solid uh, discussion about this. But I kind of would like to get an idea of, uh, you've all been in receipt of the letter, you've read it, and kind of where, where your thoughts are on this. So. I'll open up the floor up to any kind of conversation or thoughts that you have that we can give back to the petitioners. I would love them to come in and um, from the digital standpoint, that's an unknown entity. And I think that it would be very beneficial. And I think that we talked about this also, um, having them come in and demonstrate something so we could see what it is because there's always that apprehension of, hey, are you gonna look like you're coming into Vegas when you're coming <laughs> in to carry? Yeah. And I don't think people are looking for that, and I don't think that's what it is set up to be. But right. without us having something like that, I think that would be behoove us to be able to look at that so we could evaluate that we option. Could, we can bring in a uh, approximately same size digital sign right up to your parking lot. Yeah, yeah. basically, I, it's all lined it's up. It's not ours. If you guys want to see that, we'll see the date and a time mm -hmm. you know, that, that you'd like it brought out. You can come to our facility. We can come here, and they'll drive it from California all the way out. But uh, I think the key thing we're kind of looking for, and uh, when we started this process, we weren't moving down that road. Um, a digital sign is much more attractive, much, much more expensive, mm -hmm. um, but it would give us the versatility to serve all sorts of needs here in the community, for the business community, for the chamber, for the police department. Um, it's it's. It's the wave of the future. By the way, he's the future. I'm the past. I don't know how they work. <laughs> but I will tell you, and we're not talking about a business sign, uh, like some of the signs, like the park district. And him. This is a whole different critter. It's more like a very high-def TV, and it's a, a picture, you know, for a real estate agent, and then, boom, for a chiropractor. Can't mention any names. Uh, and, uh, and it changes so many seconds, it's the kind of thing that one phone call from the police department makes it an amber alert, or a traffic warning, or a weather alert. Um, also, uh, you know, although we've done a reasonably good job of organizing this weekend's fest, uh, we could do an even better job on that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And if anybody's watched us for the last few years, you know we do that. And uh, that's part of what we do here. And we do it everywhere else, too, but we both live here, so we probably do a little more here because people know how to find us. The technology has improved incredibly. It really has. Yeah, and the, during, during the discussion that we had had, you had mentioned that it's able to, you know, the, the brightness can be reduced in the evening so it's not so in your face. And Well, it's to our advantage because you don't need the extra brightness and right. you save on electricity. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I own no stock in ComEd. Yeah. So basically the way that it works is it normally has a, um, a specified standard brightness. There's a CD cell on there that basically senses the ambient light and reduces that down to a percentage of that ambient light multiplied on top of the standard or minus that standard. So during the day, it's on top of it. At night, it's beneath it. Um, because I have no desire myself to see a pixelated, uh, bright, uh, ambient uh, you know, picture 
Uh, the really nice ones, and uh, frankly, if you're going with U.S. technology, is they're actually almost impossible to tell that they're digital uh, because it just changes instantaneously and you don't see a glow. Uh, it's truly like a computer monitor where if you look at it, um, there's no light coming off of it. It's just self-contained, which is really what we're interested in doing. <coughs> I, I don't remember. You also talked about how you would be changing the... Um the foundation of the sign? The, 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 this that. type of sign would require us to totally remove the current sign at uh, Lake Julian and replace it with a, a, a unipole, which is not necessarily in your code as I think about it. But that would be painted black and with the uh, shrubbery around it would pretty much become invisible. There'd just be two mm -hmm. signs there. And we, by the way, we're talking about staying at 72 square feet, the mm -hmm. same size. We're not. I believe, and uh, we met with the county today actually on some related stuff, that small digital with high quality, you don't have to build 300 square feet. You don't have to have blaring lights, uh, but you have to have the high quality. Any questions? I'd like to see you, I think it's kind of neat that you guys can bring it here yeah. Yeah. before it snows. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'd be interested in seeing Yeah, those guys from California won't want to be here in the winter. <laughs> yeah, they said it'll take a week to drive out. Is it LED? Um, it's, a, it's an LED technology with a, with a clear plate in front of it, which basically only allow, allows the light to come straight out instead of so what scatter. they like to call light pollution, mm -hmm. know, just letting it go all directions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, those of you that were here when... Uh, the, uh, the company came to present about the electronic signs and talked to us two years ago. Um, I understand now they had said that they're uh, permitted over there for uh, reses. Mm -hmm. So that'll be going up. They're on 31. Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, I know Jim and I, we had talked about the, uh, the signs, the ones we don't want, like in uh, the Grove with that garish, you know, light and... Um, and then I know staff has already. Is that, is that the one on? Uh, at the liquor store convenient market. Okay. Yeah. So I'm glad to see that that's not going to be no, that yeah. type of that, sign. Frankly, I don't think it would work. Yeah. It would I mean, I think our customers anything. would say, I don't think so. Okay. One of the things we did discuss, though, that um, you just made me think of was that um, when I was talking to Brad Ball about this, uh, about the, the feasibility of even having businesses entertain this, I mean, obviously the village has to get through it, but then is it even feasible? Will businesses want it? Um, and one of the things we discussed was, you know, is the price going to increase dramatically uh, because we're mm -hmm. going to a digital product that needs to have a return on investment? And what we ended up figuring out was that the price would end up staying between mm -hmm. the normal $300, which is what we charge on a monthly basis for a billboard, and the ceiling for that ad, even on a digital, would be 500. Um, it, because we have the ability to serve so many more yes. clients uh, rather than just the two, it actually kind of works itself out. Nice. And, so, and to be honest with you, we've had nice. some tussles over the Lake Julian site among many of our friends here in the community. So that appeals to me because mm -hmm. I think we could take care of the local businesses that are interested right. in you know, they say, why is so-and-so up? Why am I not up? You know, it's kind of, you know, I understand where they're coming from. But uh, if you're going to have one, this would be a good one because it would also be a village, uh, what do you want to call it, uh, village posting board. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I hope we do a better job than Island Lake. I drove through there today. They have <coughs> a regular business digital by their water tower that they post all kinds of civic stuff. Changes every four seconds. You can't read it, which isn't even yeah. state code. No, I feel no. like giving him the mayor a call. He's a friend of mine. And say, have you have you had conversations with local businesses about where they are on this? Actually, yeah, we've been holding a stack of uh, of letters from clients and prospective clients as to why they would go on it, why they think it's valuable, uh, and everything else. But it hasn't been necessary to, mm -hmm. to bring that. So. Okay. Well, just from the community uh, groups. Uh, you know, if this goes through, I'll say thanks because I know uh, a lot of us have been trying to get a community event signed here in this village um, for 25 years, 30 years. Yeah. So, well, at least the technology's gotten better. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely. And for those that don't like signs, it'd be the only one. So, they'll go away. Yep. 
I just want to say I, I like the idea of the electronic option and, and the benefits it could bring to the village, and, and it sounds like we're sort of getting on the same page, and maybe it would be an opportune time to discuss a date or you know project out to when this could be demoed if everybody's in agreement. Yeah. Thursday. <laughs> uh, they can't drive that fast yeah. in California. Uh, yeah. At least a week. But I mean, next Thursday would be doable. A week from Thursday. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Or, or does it have to be on one day? I mean, yeah. could you do a well, situation more than one day. where yeah. we could, you know, drive to Liberty and, and look at it? Yeah. Or, I mean, let's be honest. They're going to stay here and go solicit other businesses while they're here. They're, you know, so they'll be here for a while. Uh, we're just we're trying to come up with a date. We've got some pretty heavy agendas coming up right now, and uh, I, <clears throat> I think it would be probably in the best interest of everybody sitting here that they're already here on a board night. That if we can do it on a board night, that would probably kill two birds with one stone. Uh, that way, we don't have to reconvene a special meeting. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, could could give we us, give, give you us a, give us we'll a couple of days to come up with a date? I think because we have a pretty full agenda, and I don't think you want to be anywhere near. Uh, the agenda on October 20th, and I think October 6th is pretty full right now. When we have one missing. Yeah, and then uh, Trustee Dudek would not be present at that meeting. I think he'd want to be participating, and I won't be calling in either. <laughs> Just heads up. Okay. Are we looking to see what the sign looks like or yeah. the display, like what the oh. display? It, it will Do you have live. any examples around that we could just drive to and look yeah. at? Um, no, uh, actually, there is nothing of this quality without going to Cook County, to be perfectly okay. honest. Yep. Could you put together like a, a YouTube of, you know, ones yes. from around the country and then send that to us? I yeah. think that'd be great. I can do that. Uh, yeah, the other thing we can do is when the actual board comes out, we can load sample content out of that board. So let's say, you know, the police or the village mm -hmm. or the chamber, things like that. We can come up with ads for everybody, and those can actually mm -hmm. go on there and rotate in the 8, 10, or 12-second increments that it, that it would be picked. So you can actually get a chance to see something that would actually be live mm -hmm. on the board, mm -hmm. uh, which might be useful. I, I would say that the the dates that he described, if it's physically possible to drive it here, late next week could work. It's not a board meeting night, but and then the following, um, you know, I can just look at calendars so we decide right here tonight. Because we're talking about. I would say the week of September 28th through October 2nd would might give you a little more time, but pick a, pick a day in or days, and, and we will just. If uh, if we have power here, we need electricity. Yeah, you know, obviously. I think they do bring a generator. Yeah, though, they but do I'll clarify. Yeah, the, the, I know we have it at, at Liberty, but the, I've never noticed a plug out front, so I don't know. Um, what were those dates again? Uh, that would be September 28th. 29th, 30th, October 1 and 2. Okay. All right, I'll find out what works for them and then I'll get back to you. Sure. Thank you, Chris. Is there anybody else having any questions right now for them? Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, let's move forward to uh, department thank heads. Thank you, guys. Uh, Chief, do you have anything for us? Eric? Eric, can we ask a question? Sure. What, uh, what I noticed, I saw the traffic lines on First Street. Yeah. What are they tracking? We have initiated, a, at the request of a resident, a speed study for that neighborhood. Okay. So we've been tracking the speeds and traffic volumes on uh, Frankie, Burton, Park, and First. And we'll get a report about that? Yes. Okay. And then the other thing is, um, do we subcontract? You know, we've got our guys out there uh, washing and polishing and cleaning the uh, water towers. Do we... Do they subcontract the work to somebody else? Or is it the actual people that we hired? Are you referring to the Carragonkin Road Tower? Yeah. Or yeah. That, that's, part, that's part of our painting rehabilitation project. So that is, uh, it's primarily uh, just the, uh, the contractor that we awarded the bid to, AM Coat. Uh, they don't subcontract sub out the majority of the work. OK. And then the last thing is, fantastic job this year, um, finishing up the roads. I mean, everything looks good, yes. I mean, there was some, you know, some bumps there, but uh, uh, the two-way over by me over by Sienna Point, that's worked out great. The residents are loving it now, being able to. Um, so I've just got to give you a great compliment that uh, the streets really look good. Appreciate that. Yeah. Can I just say one thing, too? 
you did by approving his agreement tonight. <laughs> uh, the other thing is, we I don't think we've seen you since we went to your open house at the Public Works because you weren't at the last oh, meeting. That's right. So oh, yeah. what a fantastic job. Anyone that residents that haven't had an opportunity to go and see how that's set up, it's phenomenal. And your, uh, all the employees did a great job. It was very informative yeah. and very interesting. I never thought going through something that would be that interesting, <laughs> but it was. <laughs> Thank so, you so great much. job by all. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Jacob, do you have anything? Uh, no, Aaron. Brian? I believe you do have in the packets uh, the department or the monthly report for community development. Uh, just a few highlights on there. Uh, compared to last year, uh, we are still seeing a decrease in the overall permits, uh, mainly due to the lack of a weather-related incident this year. Uh, we're down about 20% compared to last year, but still trending significantly up compared to 2013, uh, about 67% above the permit numbers for that year. Uh, just a few highlights for the zoning board um, agenda items. Uh, as you know, Dunkin' Donuts received board approval in July for their facility. Uh, earlier today, they did actually submit permits or four permits uh, to build that facility, so they are moving forward with that project. Uh, also, uh, for next Thursday's meeting, uh, we do have three cases that are on the agenda. Uh, residents proposing to construct a new detached garage on their property in Frankie. Uh, we do have plans from a developer to construct a standalone Starbucks uh, next to the KFC, uh, the, the former KFC property uh, between KFC and Feinberg Drive. Uh, so they'll be pursuing that uh, project through the zoning process. And then we do have a petition from uh, a property owner uh, that's owned a property on uh, Harper Avenue for uh, several years to develop a uh, planned development uh, there for nine single family homes, uh, which was discussed before the board, I believe in January this year, uh, conceptually. Uh, so he has decided to pursue that project as originally discussed. Um, originally he was looking at uh, possibly combining them for duplexes or another uh, model, uh, but they're moving forward with that project and that'll be on the board, zoning board next week. Uh, other activity, uh, Marathon has submitted for permits to expand, uh, basically remove the car wash at their facility and uh, the corner of First and uh, North, uh, Main Street. Uh, they will be adding a small retail component there that will include a Red Mango and Quiznos restaurants uh, for carryout uh, food. Uh, Lou Malnati's is also very close to getting issued for a permit for their takeout location next to the Walgreens, uh, so that's uh, moving along nicely. And then a uh, in the industrial sector, uh, I mentioned before we had a uh, industrial uh, supplier or a, a company that was interested in purchasing the former Fox Valley Systems buildings. Uh, that actually took place, that closed on the property about a week or so ago. Uh, they have actually submitted for permits to rehab uh, those buildings. They've already started work on the roof. Uh, you might see some flags on the roof uh, for workers so that they know where the edge of the structure is, but they have also submitted for permits to do some interior demo work. And then when that work is completed, they will go forward with putting the properties back on the market for lease. Um, overall, also uh, from the last committee uh, time I spoke before the board, there were some uh, questions regarding the occupancy numbers in the town. It did provide some information in the report. Uh, as far as commercial occupancy numbers and also industrial uh, numbers as well, uh, just to give that information to you. Great job. Rick, were you happy with that report? No, not really what I was looking for, but it, I mean, it's a start. It's a first time, you know, first time around. It's, it's indicative of the fact that we need more of certain kind of properties if we have relatively high occupancy rates. Mm -hmm. um, I know Kaplan used to say that having large open properties was a plus, and you can see that in Crystal Lake with the large retail users that have come in to fill up um, Dominix and uh, I think it was a TJ Maxx that's now a, a clothing store as well. So I think it's just, it's a first step. It's um, not quite what I'm looking for, to be candid with you, but we can talk about that another time. Okay. we got and that's fine if you want to do another time, but I mean, I got one question asked and I got a different answer than what the question was. I mean, he asked about the content of the report and, and then you talked about some of the issues. I understand that. Mm -hmm. We'd be glad to sit down with you about the report in detail, but I think the question was about the format. Is that is that what you were seeking? No. Okay. No. 
Because if the information is not what I'm seeking, then the format's not what I'm seeking either. I'm looking for a lot more detailed information about what's going on from an economic development perspective in this town. And those two quotes didn't give me that. Okay. We'll sit down with you. I mean, not a big deal. It's, yeah. it's, it's a first attempt, so we'll, we'll talk okay. about it. Thank you, Brian. Uh, now I will entertain a motion to adjourn into executive session to, uh, I'm sorry, I, is there anything, any future agenda items and discussion by the village board? Now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn into executive session uh, to review closed session minute, minutes review, personnel, uh, appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dis dismissal of specific employees in collective bargaining. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you.